Hugues Félicité Robert de Laminis or de la the 19th of June 1782 to the 27th of February 1854 was a French Catholic priest, philosopher and political theorist. He was one of the most influential intellectuals of Restoration France. Laminis is considered the forerunner of liberal Catholicism and social Catholicism. His opinions on matters of religion and government changed dramatically over the course of his life. He initially held rationalistic views, but in part due to the influence of his brother, Jean-Marie, came to see religion as an antidote for the anarchy and tyranny unleashed by revolution. He derided Napoleon, in part because of the organic articles, in which France acting unilaterally amended the Concordat of 1801 between France and the papacy. Laminus assailed the Gallican view of the relationship between civil authority and the Church and was for a time a staunch ultramontane. Youth Laminus was born at St. Malo in the ancient province of Brittany on 19 June 1782, the son of a wealthy merchant who had recently received a coat of arms from the king. He lost his mother at the age of five and as a result, he and his brother, Jean-Marie, were sent for education to an uncle, Robert de Sadre at La Chennai, an estate near St. Malo. Resistant to any kind of discipline, his uncle would lock him in the library where he spent long hours reading Rousseau and Pascal, among others, and acquired a vast and varied learning. Revolution was to have a profound effect on Laminus. His family sheltered non-juring priests. Father V.A. said Mass on occasion in the dark at La Chennai. <laughs> First publications Of a sickly and sensitive nature, and shocked by the events of the French Revolution, Laminus developed a morbid frame of mind. He first held rationalistic views, but partly through the influence of his brother Jean-Marie and partly as a result of his philosophical and historical studies, he came to see the power of faith and religion. He voiced his convictions in Réflexions sur l'état de l'Église en France pendant la 18 IEME siècle et sur sa situation actuelle, published anonymously in Paris in 1808. The idea for this work and the materials were due to Jean-Marie, but the actual writing was done almost exclusively by Félicité. It recommended religious revival and active clerical organization and the awakening of an ultramontane spirit. Napoleon's police deemed the book dangerously ideological and tried to suppress it. Laminus devoted most of the following year to translating Louis de Blois' Speculum Monocorum into French, which he published in 1809 under the title Le Guide Spirituel. In 1811 Laminus received the tonsure and became professor of mathematics in an ecclesiastical college at St. Malo founded by his brother, who had been ordained a Catholic priest in 1804. When the school was closed by imperial authority the following year, Félicité withdrew to La Chennai, while his brother became vicar general of the Diocese of saint Brieuc. In 1814 he published, with his brother, De la Tradition de l'Église sur l'Institution des Evics 1814, in which he strongly condemned Gallicanism and the interference of political authority in ecclesiastical affairs. It was provoked by Napoleon's nomination of Jean Siffrain Mori as Archbishop of Paris in accordance with the provisions of the Concordat of 1801. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Exile, Return, and Ordination. Laminus hailed the Bourbon Restoration of 1814, which he witnessed in Paris, because he saw Louis XVIII as a force for religious regeneration. During the Hundred Days, he escaped to London, where he worked in Kensington at an institution for the children of poor immigrants. After the final overthrow of Napoleon in 1815, he returned to Paris. Laminus sought in religion a remedy for the anarchy and tyranny unleashed by revolution. He undertook the study of theology and was ordained a subdeacon on 21 December. At this time he considered joining the Jesuits, however the prospect of a novitiate year led him to decide to become a secular priest. It was in St. Brieuc, in February 1816 that Laminus received the diaconate. He was ordained by the Bishop of Rennes on 9 March 1817. Essay sur l'indifférence en matière de religion 
The first volume of his great work, Essay sur l'indifference en matière de religion, or Essay on indifference in matters of religion, appeared in 1817 and established his reputation throughout Europe. He became, according to Lacordaire, a humble priest with all the authority once enjoyed by Boswit. His experience of Napoleon persuaded him that the state had no right to interfere in religion. Laminus denounced religious indifference by the state and toleration while advocating for a restoration of the pre-revolutionary authority of the Catholic Church. He contended that private judgment, introduced by Martin Luther into religion, by Descartes and Leibniz into philosophy and science, and by Rousseau and the encyclopedists into politics, had resulted in practical atheism and spiritual death. He asserted that ecclesiastical authority, founded on the absolute revelation delivered to the Jewish people, but supported by the universal tradition of all nations, was the sole hope of regenerating the European communities. Three more volumes Paris, 1818 followed and met with a mixed reception from the Gallican bishops and monarchists, but with the enthusiastic support from the younger clergy. Three Roman theologians examined his work and Pope Leo XII gave it his formal approval. Laminus visited Rome at the Pope's request. He was offered but refused membership in the College of Cardinals. Laminus also published works of piety, for example, a widely read French version of The Imitation of Christ with Notes and Reflections 1824, Guide du Premier Age, Journey du Chrétien, and Recule de Piété 1828. The failure of a publishing house aimed at spreading this pious literature resulted in his own financial ruin. Topic. Political advocacy On his return to France he took a prominent part in political work. Together with Chateaubriand and the Comte de Villelay he was a regular contributor to Le Conservateur Littéraire. However, when Villelay became the chief supporter of absolute monarchy, Laminus withdrew his support and started two rival organs, Le Drapeau Blanc and Le Memorial Catholique. He authored a pamphlet criticizing the 1825 anti-sacrilege law introduced by Vallely's administration. Various other minor works, together with De la Religion Considere dans ses rapports avec l'ordre civil et politique 1825 kept his name before the public. <laughs> Ultramontane and theocratic democracy advocacy He retired to La Chennai and gathered a group of disciples, including Montalembert, Lacordaire and Maurice de Guerin. He espoused Ultramontanism and aimed to create an organized body of opinion to campaign against Gallicanism, the control and influence of the state in church matters. Les progress de la révolution et de la guerre contre l'église, or on the progress of the revolution and the war against the church, 1828 marked his complete renunciation of royalist principles and from that time on he advocated on behalf of a theocratic democracy. J. P. T. Berry suggests that Laminus and his associates found inspiration in a Belgian liberal Catholic movement centered in Malins and led by Archbishop de Mayon's vicar general, Engelbert Sterk X. Largely Catholic Belgium seceded from the Netherlands in 1830 and established a constitutional monarchy. Sterk X, who became Archbishop in 1832 found a way not merely to tolerate the new liberal constitution, but to expand the church under the new liberties guaranteed. Laminus founded L'Avenir, the first issue of which appeared on 16 October 1830, with the motto, God and Liberty. His social theories became more radical. The paper was aggressively democratic, demanding rights of local administration, an enlarged suffrage, separation of church and state, universal freedom of conscience, instruction, assembly, and the press. Styles of worship were to be criticized, improved or abolished in absolute submission to the spiritual, not to the temporal authority. His views were opposed by the bishops and supported by the younger clergy, but he lost even their support when he said priests should not be paid by the state. With the help of Montalembert, he founded the Agence Générale pour la Défense de la Liberté Religieuse, which became a far-reaching organization with agents throughout France who monitored violations of religious freedom. As a result, the periodical's career was stormy and its circulation opposed by conservative bishops. Although pressured by the French government and the French hierarchy, Pope Gregory XVI would have preferred not to make an official issue of the matter. 
However, Laminus, Montalembert, and Lacordaire suspended their work and in November 1831 set out to Rome to obtain the Pope's approval. Archbishop Quaylen of Paris had warned Lamine that he was being unrealistic and was viewed as a demagogue in favor of revolution. As Quaylen was a Gallican, Lamine ignored him. After much opposition, they gained an audience, but only on condition that their political project should not be mentioned. Metternich, whose Austrian troops ensured the stability of the Papal States, pressed for a condemnation. A few days later they received a letter from Cardinal Pacca, advising their departure from Rome and suggesting that the Holy See, while admitting the justice of their intentions, would like the matter left open for the present. Le Cordaire and Montalembert departed immediately, but Laminus stayed on until Gregory's letter to the Polish bishops, which denounced the Polish revolution against the Tsar, dashed his last hopes. Gregory thought the Polish revolutionaries were seeking to undermine Russian Tsar Nicholas I's efforts to support the Catholic royalist cause in France by forcing him to divert his troops to suppress the uprising in Poland. While staying in Munich, Laminus received the 1832 encyclical Merari Vos, which condemned religious pluralism in general and certain of Laminus's ideas advanced in Lavenir without mentioning his name. After this, Laminus and his two lieutenants declared that out of deference to the Pope they would not resume the publication of Lavenir and dissolve the Agence Générale as well. Ma <laughs> Separation from the Church, imprisonment, and further publications Laminus retired to La Chennai, an estate near St. Malo, Brittany. He communicated his resentment and political beliefs only through correspondence. The Vatican in turn demanded his frank and full adhesion to the encyclical Merari Vos. Laminus refused to submit without qualification and in December 1833 renounced his ecclesiastical functions and abandoned all external profession of Christianity. In May 1834, Laminus penned Paroles d'une croyante, or Words of a Believer, 1834 a collection of aphorisms that denounced the established social order—what he called the conspiracy of kings and priests against the people—and declared his rupture with the Church. In the encyclical Singulary Nose of 25 June 1834, Pope Gregory XVI condemned the book as "...small in size, but enormous in wickedness." and censured Lamine's philosophical system. Paroles was inspired by Adam Mickiewicz's Szegi Narodu Polskiego i Pilgrzymstwa Polskiego Books of the Polish Nation and Polish Pilgrimage. The Paroles marked Lamine's turn to a Christian socialism that inspired a whole generation of socialists. His radical ideas reflected an overlap of Catholic and socialist discourses that can be traced back to the 1820s. Sometime after the 5th of April 1836, he was imprisoned at Ste. Pelagie, a prison for debtors. Laminus was increasingly abandoned by his friends, and in 1837 published Les Affaires de Rome, des mots de l'Église si de la société, in which he provided his perspective on his relations with Gregory XVI. After this, Laminus penned several articles in the Revue des Deux Mondes, the Revue du Progrès and Le Monde, and published the pamphlets Le Livre du Pupil De l'Esclavage Moderne 1839, Politique à l'Essage du Pupil 1839, Discussions Critiques 1841, Du Passé et de l'Avenir du Pupil 1841, Amchaspans et Darwins 1843, in which he espoused popular sovereignty and attacked contemporary society and the public authorities. After the publication of Le Pays et le Gouvernement 1840, he was censored and imprisoned for a year in 1841. From 1841 to 1846 Laminus published the four volumes of Esquis d'une philosophie, a treatise on metaphysics, which detailed his departure from Christianity. The third volume, An Exposition of Art as a Development of the Aspirations and Needs of Worship, formed its core. Laminus also published Les Evangiles, a French translation of the Gospels with added notes and reflections. In 1846 Laminus published Une Voie de Prison, written during his imprisonment. <laughs> <laughs> Involvement in the Second Republic Laminus sympathized with the Revolution of 1848 and was elected a deputy for Paris to the Constituent Assembly. He drew up a plan for a constitution, which was rejected as too radical. After this, he confined himself to silent participation in the sessions. 
He also started the newspapers Le Pupil Constituent and La Révolution démocratique et sociale, espousing radical revolution. Both papers quickly ceased publication. He was also named president of the Société de la Solidarité Républicaine. He remained a deputy in the legislative assemblies until Napoleon III's 1851 coup, which depressed and isolated him once more. Later years and death After 1851, he occupied himself with La Divine Comédie, a translation of Dante's Divine Comedy, and refused several attempts to reconcile him to the Church. He died in Paris in 1854 and was buried at Père Lachaise Cemetery in a common grave, without funeral rites, mourned by political and literary admirers. Works There are two complete works in ten volumes, the first published in 1836–1837 as Herves Complétes de la Menaise, the second published in 1844 as Herves Complétes de Laminus. Both are incomplete. See also Singularity Nose